I have my Sato FA40 open rocker engine here that I purchased recently and uh, this was an engine that I've wanted for many years. So I've been doing some runs on it and those of you that subscribe to my channel have probably seen the runs. The one thing that I'm kind of pretty disappointed about with this engine was the original carburetor is just not functioning the way it's designed. So if you notice my last video I actually had this thing running and I've got it running with a carburetor off of a different vintage Sato FA45 engine. Uh, you can see this is the original carburetor and I'll go into the differences there shortly but this is just a, a carb that I happen to fit with it and you can see it looks like it's got a very standard looking needle valve. Now I do have another Sato FA45 engine much more closer to the vintage of that FA40 which is this. This is a two-piece head very much like this Sato FA40 open rocker. I didn't use this carb. I don't really know why I didn't use this carb. I just chose not to take this carb off this particular engine. I could have though because this is a good operating carb. But it will give me a, net, a chance to show the differences in these two carbs. So let me get them oriented the same here. FA40 carb. FA45. Now you look at them real quickly and say, well, geez, they look almost identical, but let me see if I can zoom in here a bit more. There's some pretty significant differences here. Well, this camera refocuses here. Come oh, on, you can do it. Okay. FA45. The needles look similar, but they're really not. If I unscrew this needle from the 45, you'll see that this has external threads just like every other needle valve I've ever seen in existence. If I unscrew the needle valve for this FA40, you'll see I'm not exposing any threads here at all. It's because the threads on this thing are internally threaded. External thread, internal thread, which makes these two needles completely incompatible at all. And if you look closely inside this needle that came out of the 40, it's got a, a body inside there that's threaded. This one is hollow because of how they're thread in there. So I'm going to have to go get a little wrench here because I want to take this needle assembly off of this body and explain why I was never able to get this engine adjusted. Okay, so I got a little wrench here. I'm going to loosen this retaining nut up here so I can get this thing off. Okay, let me take that thing off. So, this is what the needle looks like, or the needle assembly. The issue that this particular engine has is that when this thing, this needle is fully threaded in here, it never actually goes far enough to actually close that orifice completely. So even when this is threaded completely in, I can't close the fuel supply off completely. Thus, I can't actually lean this engine out. You should be able to close a needle valve on an engine until it's completely lean, until it's closed and then and then it dies. This one, because of the design and maybe they didn't have the right length here or what, it never would thread in there far enough to actually close that enough. So what I ended up having to do was try and then tune it with this knob, which is the low speed knob. So I could sit there and I could tune, them, tune it with the low speed knob and obviously these two needles are doing this thing. And that low speed knob is coming in contact, or yeah, it is actually coming in contact, and it's wanting to you know close off the fuel supply that way. So yeah, I could sit there, and I did that for one tank that I didn't have on film. And I sat there, and I tuned it, and I tuned it this way. I had this needle fully closed, and tuned it, and I could get it to kind of run, but it limited my throw. You'll look how much throttle arm throw this thing has. That's full throttle. That's closed. I was only able to get about this much throw. I could never go past the midway point here at all because anything past that was so rich, even with that needle fully closed, it was so rich 
that it just wouldn't even, you'd drop RPM just because it was so blubbering rich. So my actual movement was only about like this much, and I could only get up to about 7200 RPM tops. Idle was never really a problem. I could get it low enough to idle, and it would idle okay, but full throttle was never, never possible. But if you see this Neo valve I've got here, or this carb assembly, I've, I can use this full travel. And on the last video, I was able to actually get it up to, you know, like 79 RPM, 7900 RPM. I think I might have seen the Globy peak at 82, but a peak doesn't tell me if it's really running there, so I'm not really counting that. But anyway, that's kind of what I consider the design flaw in this engine, because this one, if I thread this needle all the way in, even with the throttle fully open, and put a piece of tape, uh, tubing on there, I can blow through it and keep blowing close off these orifices obviously and blow it and tune and screw this all the way in until I can't get any more air to flow through there at all and that's how it should operate that isn't how it operated on this carb so in my opinion this was just either some poor parts that they included with this particular engine or just a poor design I mean I've never seen another Sato engine that had an internal thread like this so maybe they determined after they made this that this really wasn't a very good way to do it oops I'm sorry wasn't a very good way to do it or what, but uh, this carb is pretty much useless. I mean, it, it can't be used to tune an engine because the needle can't be threaded in there far enough to close off fuel supply enough to even lean the engine out for proper operation. So, I'm stuck with this nice, beautiful engine that uh, can't run with its stock carburetor, so I'm either going to have to always have one of these carbs off of one of my other engines or see if I can't come up with another alternative but anyway that's where we stand with the Sato open rocker engine <laughs>